Welcome to the Windows Crate for Rust, letting you call any Windows API, past, present, and future. Rust is a systems programming language. The Rust programming language is comparable to that of C++, both in terms of its syntax and the fact that it provides performance on par with modern C++. However, unlike C++, Rust is built on the promise of guaranteed memory safety without the need for garbage collection. Why Rust? Well, it could have something to do with the fact that it is the most beloved programming language by far year after year. It may have a relatively steep learning curve, but once you're over the hump, it's hard not to fall in love. Much like C++ WinRT before it, Rust for Windows is an open source project developed on GitHub. We accept contributions, so feel free to get involved. As a Rust developer, you're probably already using Cargo along with Crates.io to manage your dependencies. The good news is that the Windows Crate gives you immediate access to the Windows API. You can also find Rust documentation for the Windows Crate over on docs.rs. Not convinced? Let's write some code. At the command prompt, let's use Cargo to create a new project. And let's make that the current directory. We'll also use Cargo to create a nested crate called bindings, so that the build can cache the results of any bindings we import. Now let's open the sample in VS Code. First up, let's open the project's cargo.toml file, and let's add a dependency to the local bindings crate. Now inside the cargo toml file for the bindings crate itself, we can add a dependency to the windows crate, both for the bindings library and its build script. Just make sure to use the latest version. Now we can add the build script itself. This is where we're going to generate the bindings that we will ultimately rely on. Notice how the build script lives directly inside the bindings directory, outside of the source directory. Now inside the build script, let's add a main function. And then within the main function, we'll call the Windows build macro to generate bindings. The build macro takes care of resolving any dependencies, directly or indirectly, chasing down any types you may need by parsing and inspecting the types and metadata that take the form of WinMD files, describing all of the Windows APIs. It then generates Rust types or bindings directly from the metadata. We'll start with just a single declaration. The syndication API lets us download and parse an RSS feed, so we'll use that to download the recent entries from my blog. You can list any use paths you need in your project. You can even use an asterisk wildcard to generate bindings for an entire set of APIs. Obviously, build time will be improved if you only generate the bindings you actually need. So let's limit it to just the syndication client class. Even then, the build macro will automatically include other supporting types that it determines are necessary to use the syndication client class. Now inside the bindings library source itself, let's remove the default code, and we'll just use the Windows include bindings macro to include the source code generated in the, in the previous step by the build script. Here, the Rust analyzer extension is reminding us that we need to enable this opt-in feature to actually get code completion for generated code. So we'll turn that on. Wonderful. So that's it for the bindings crate. Anytime you need access to additional APIs, simply list them in the build script. Now we can start writing code for our project. Let's open up the main source file for the project. And before we write any code, let's make sure we can build and run by hitting the run shortcut provided by the Rust Analyzer extension. If this is the first time you're building the project, it may take some time for Rust to compile the bindings. Fortunately, it's smart enough to cache the results and use them for subsequent builds. Great. Down in the terminal window, you can see that it successfully downloaded and compiled the dependencies before building the sample project itself. Now we'll employ a use declaration to shorten the path to types we actually need. The result type helps us with error propagation and concise error handling. The syndication API uses the URI class to identify the location of the RSS feed. And finally, the syndication client class itself. Now we can add a main function to do the work of downloading the RSS feed. You'll notice we're using the Windows result type as the return type of the function. This will make things easier as it's common to deal with errors from operating system functions. First up, inside the main function, we'll create the Windows Foundation URI object. Here you can see the question mark operator being used to handle and short circuit any error resulting from this method call. If you come from a C-sharp or a C++ background, think of this as the moral equivalent of exception handling. 
This just avoids us having to do a bunch of manual error handling. Windows runtime classes like this were designed for languages with constructors, like the C-sharp and C++ languages. But since Rust lacks constructors, we're left with calling these equivalent static methods, create URI in this case. Next we'll create the syndication client object. Here again the syndication client class was modeled with the default constructor, and this is translated into a static new method commonly used in Rust. And then we can use this object to retrieve or download the RSS feed. The retrieve feed async method takes the URI object and begins an async operation. That's the result of the retrieve feed async method itself. We can either use a Rust async function to cooperatively wait for the results, or just use the blocking get method to do the same in a synchronous fashion. Finally, we can enumerate the items representing the recent entries from my blog. The feed items contain a lot of information, but here we'll just pull out the titles as text and print them out. And that's it. Let's take it for a spin. Again, you can either hit the run or debug buttons provided by the Rust Analyzer crate directly inside of VS Code. And there you can see a nice list. Or you can return to the console and use Cargo to build and run the app. The Windows Crate makes it as easy and natural as possible to call and even implement Windows APIs using the Rust language. A lot of work goes into making this all come together, from parsing metadata, generating idiomatic Rust bindings, and much more. Do give it a try and let us know what you think.